My name is Oliver Wong. I am an adult film director and a stand-up comedian. And then when I'm directing my adult films, I also go by the name Bloomer Yan. Hmm. So with that being said, like you've you've already uh, like really carved out a a a section of the industry for yourself. You are being touted as one of the rising stars behind the camera, behind the scenes when it comes to not only uh, direction, but also uh, writing because you you have this keen eye for what you want to see, what the audience want to see, but also you try your best to involve a story, like three dimensional characters on the screen, not just two people see each other and then immediately jump into bed together. Yeah, I, I am really flattered you said that. I didn't know I was being touted as one of the rising stars. I did not know that. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. I don't know where you get that information. <laughs> <laughs> I get paid well, so. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's good, yeah, because I think, because I went to film school, I have two degrees in films, one in film production and a master's in screenwriting. So. I always like stories and then I was like, okay, if I'm gonna direct porn, how can I utilize my skills in porn? Mm. So that is why I, I have a lot of stories in my porn because I think it's kind of a self re selfish reason. I just want to utilize my skills. But it turned out a lot of performers and a lot of audiences, they also appreciate storylines in porn. Right. It's, yeah. it, is, it is true. I mean, you got to give the viewer something to hold on to like yeah okay the physicality and the the image and the scenes going out in a sexual way yeah it's captivating but if you can add more to it like just something that keeps people drawn in for another reason then you get more out of a viewer than just maybe five minutes at most yeah yeah Exactly. I always say that if I'm going to see a plumber having sex with a housewife, I want to at least know their character and their stories. What's the motivation? What's the drive here? <laughs> to have stories? I, I don't know. I just feel like if I'm just going to do another regular porn, mm -hmm. it's uh, going to be boring. Yeah. So did you like, I, I know you have a podcast and it's, um. For, forgive me if I got the title wrong, but it's Something in Boba, right? Yes, Sex and Boba. Sex and Boba, there it is, yes. And yeah. uh, in one of the episodes, you actually go into the you know explanation as to how it is you became a director in the adult industry. Um, yeah. And it, it, it kind of goes along the lines of two, two, twofold for you. One, it is, uh, it's not, who, it's not what you know, it's who you know, but also it is what you know, because you have already had a reputation for being a good director. How can you, can you walk us through how this all came to be? Like, uh, how did I become a porn director? Yes. <laughs> okay, great. So, uh, long story short. So, uh, the company that I work for, they come from Asia originally, and then they were just branching out to different countries and then when they are going to branch out in the u.s they are looking for directors and somehow we have a mutual friend so this mutual friend he doesn't want to direct porn so he referred me to a company and i was like yeah sure i can direct porn i don't mind and then at the time i was even like oh maybe i can talk about porn in my standard comedy routine which will kind of help me you know grow my comedy because not a lot of people who do stand up is also a porn director. You know, a lot. Of people, <laughs> I'd say that's a pretty small market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people who do stand up talk about porn, mm. but not a lot of people work in porn. Right. Yeah. So I was like, okay, let me direct porn. I'm gonna do this maybe for like one time or maybe two times and see if I like it. And then, well, I like it a lot because it is actually creatively fulfilling to me and mm. also fine financially fulfilled. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so I was like, okay, I'm going to keep doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, being a stand-up comic and you actually, um, it's, according to my notes, you started in 2018? Yes. Yeah. I've been doing comedy for like four or five years. Okay. 
I, I would love to know what took you to that point of getting up on the stage, but um, correct me if yeah. I'm wrong, stand-up comedy relies a lot on like personal stories and personal reflection. Correct. Yes. So stand-up comedian, what we do is basically you are presenting yourself on the stage and you need to be as authentic as you can be. If you are trying to fake a persona, I think people can smell it. Okay, uh, let me correct myself. Sure. Everybody, everybody has a persona on the stage, but that persona, need, that persona needs to be an extension of yourself. It cannot be a completely made up persona. Right. Because then people will be like, well, you are being an actor. You are not being a comedian. So, anyways, so uh, back then in 2018, I was just very lonely because I'm an immigrant kid. All my family, they are still in Taiwan. And then back then, I just didn't really have any friends because I was. So I landed in the United States in 2015. Mm. But for the past few years, I just felt really depressed because I just don't have any friends. My English was not really good. And then I needed an emotional outlet. So I found out there is this medium called stand-up comedy, which we don't have that in Taiwan. I mean, now we do, but back then we didn't. So I was like, okay, what do I got to lose? Because I don't know anybody in the US. I don't have any friends. Even if I go up on a stage and I bomb, nobody is going to remember me. So what? So I'm just going to do it. So I do it and I like it. Really? So it was just a literally like a roll of the dice and a chance that you took and pulling from your own experiences, you just took to the stage. Yeah. And then there is this comedy club in Los Angeles called Flappers Comedy Club. So they have like a weekly audition on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. So the second time I got on the stage was at that audition. And then after the audition, they accept me and gave me a three minute spot at the show. So that is how I got started. You must have some like influences and some some people that you, you know, are, draw from. Uh, where do you find like find your inspiration for comedy? OK, before Louis C.K. was busted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before Louis C.K. was busted for his scandals, I yeah. really liked it. I, I, I got to admit, he was my inspiration until I found out, oh, shit, he masturbated two people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, and then um, right now, I really like Ali Wong. And uh, I also like Eliza Slicinger. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, I forgot his name. Uh, uh, la, 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 la. It's like he has these sleeping issues. and Oh, uh, um, John, John something um okay. i'm gonna google because this is gonna drive yeah, me yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> comedian stand-up comedian and we will see if we are talking about the same guy oh mike burbiglia oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. okay i know i know i okay for some reason i thought you were talking about uh john john mulaney okay yeah i like john mulaney as well okay okay but still, I mean, that's those are some very different, but also like powerful uh, inspirations for comedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when someone attends a show and you take to the stage, like, how what what can someone expect? Because as you stated before, there's not a whole lot of people like yeah, there's comedians out there who talk about porn, but not a whole lot out there who are actually directing porn. Yeah. So I think a lot of people, they are intrigued by me being an Asian gay man who also directs trade porn. Mm -hmm. So I think that combination just immediately makes people want to listen to me. And also because of my accent, you know, people are just like, oh, this guy is weird, is abnormal. <laughs> <laughs> and in addition to talk about porn, okay, by the way, I want to clarify, I don't talk about porn on stage in a really nasty way. Mm -hmm. I talk about porn in a really clean way mm. well obviously i will talk about fucking but my jokes are really about fucking itself gotcha. it's more about the absurdity of a porn set like it's more about what i observe on the porn set it's not really about the fucking but in addition to porn i also talk about me being a gay man i talk about my parents i talk about my dating life my sex life about my desire to find sugar daddies <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, what, 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 uh, what gay man wouldn't talk about and have that sort of desire, right? 
Yeah, and, oh, I also talk about HIV because uh, I'm HIV positive, so I will talk about that. But I don't talk about that a lot because I think that it's a really heavy topic to some people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, with that being said, I do appreciate you, uh, you know, sharing that, and I, I certainly hope that you stay healthy as possible. Oh, I'm really healthy, and I'm open about it. I talk about it on my TikTok and uh, Instagram, so well, it's fine. There you go. Well, thank you. Regardless, thank you. Back into uh, directing and whatnot. You have a master's in screenwriting and a bachelor's in film production. Did Was this the direction that you wanted to go into? Like, clearly, you have a passion for film. When I studied film, I did not think I have a passion in films. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. I was, I was just like, I don't know why I want to study and I have to go to college. Let me find a subject that doesn't sound boring. <laughs> That's that is definitely something that's not boring. I can give you that, sure. Yeah, and um, so I just did that, and then um, I just needed a job. To be honest, after I graduated from my master's, I was working in a restaurant, driving Uber. Like, I was a little sad because I was, oh god, I have a master's, but I have to work in a restaurant. Not that there's nothing wrong working with a restaurant, but that's just not how I envision my life to be. You know. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I, I can, I can wor working in working in the service industry for a couple of years myself. Not anymore, thank goodness. Uh, I don't, I do not have the temperament nor the patience or the energy for that industry. Credit to anyone who does, but exactly. my goodness, yeah. But I want to say, I think people who work in the service industry, they were all better workers. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, they, they, it's, that's a different breed of people for sure. Yeah. So with that, you are like, you got your opportunity through, uh, basically, uh, a recommendation from a friend who passed on the opportunity to direct, uh, adult films. What was it like and how has it changed? Like, how has your technique changed over the years? Because you like must have like done some independent work beforehand this time around you're actually like you're you're I, I don't know how to explain my thought here but like you're you're actually in an established industry with a lot of running on the line here what was the transition like uh i think in the beginning i was exploring myself as well as a director and writer so before i got into porn i didn't really have a lot of opportunities to utilize my skills as a creative because it's very hard to find creative work in los angeles as a director and writer because nobody's gonna give you money to produce anything you know mm. it's, the competition is really harsh and then if you are nobody, you basically have to self-found your projects. And I was not rich. I'm still not. I'm not able to do that. But after I got into porn, I was like, oh, suddenly I have so much opportunities to create. And the studio will be able to give me the funding. So I feel I was in a really privileged position. So in the beginning, I was practicing my creativity, actually. So in the beginning, my story are a little simpler. I don't want to do anything that is too unconventional so i did watch a lot of porn produced by other studios and see okay if i can do something similar but now it's been two years so mm. at this point i don't really see what other porn studios are doing i'm gonna do my own thing and i'm really lucky that my company gives me a lot of creative freedom so i can basically do whatever i want well clearly you've proven yourself uh, according to my notes again that were provided to me by our mutual contact here uh, nominated uh, for a pair of Fleshbot awards nominated for movie of the year and best oral sex scene uh, to which you actually took home the trophy for that one. Like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> congratulations on that. Yeah. Um, so here's, here's where my mind is, is like, I've, I've been I've been fortunate enough to talk to a lot of people in the industry over the past couple of years. You are my first director and I appreciate thank you for that. But it, it did get me thinking over the past couple of years, like what does it take to actually write a script and what does it take to actually direct an adult film? Because there is there's some established things. There's some established shots and some stuff that's kind of expected. But at the same time, like 
you can't just do a cookie cutter type film or video or production because it's it's boring it's dull it's tired so what like how do you make it your own how do you create that sort of opportunity or use that opportunity to create something that is uniquely your own and also like clearly get the recognition that you deserve what i think really helpful for myself is when i'm writing porn i don't think i'm writing porn i was just like I'm writing a short film with an actual sex scene. Mm. If you have that mentality, your window is open, your world is open, because you are not being confined in the world of porn. Okay. You can write all kind of story that you want, as long as the sex scene happens in there. It, it literally can be anything. It can be a music video. It can be a horror film. It can be an action film. It can even be about, I don't know, two people talking about nothing in their living room, as long as there is sex involved. Fair enough. Yeah. I never, I, I guess, I guess that's my own fault and my own naivete for thinking like, okay, so the focus has to be on the sex scene, but you're saying that, no, it's, that is, that is a given within the video, within the production. It's the story that, kind of you know encompasses the entire thing is what creates the opportunity to make this scene happen and make this sex scene happen and and so on and so forth yeah exactly here's an example uh, i'm just gonna make it brief i don't want to go into too many details so sure. <laughs> I, I wrote these stories a couple months ago and then it's called drought so it's set in a post apocalyptic world where there's a drought and then the story is just about a couple a man and a woman and then they the story is about them fighting how to use the limited amount of water they have in their house. So they have different ways of like use the water. Like the wife is like, oh, we need to water the plant. But the husband is like, we should not water the plant. We don't have that much water. So it's, if you just look at the story, it doesn't look like porno. Right. But at the end, they make peace with each other and they have sex. It becomes a porno. So, as you know, it's like if you just watch the first 90% of the film, you would think you're just watching a show film. Mm -hmm. But who knows? At the end, there is a sex scene. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you familiar with, uh, I know it's a completely different uh, company, but uh, Pirates. Uh, it was a uh, adult film that came out a couple of years ago and they actually made... Yeah. A sequel that like that is a, a, a for me that is a great example of a story that was like absolutely the point of the entire film and it, it brings to mind what you're trying to explain is the fact that have the story there which creates the opportunities for these sex scenes to happen yes Yes, I watch clips of Pirate, and I know it's really high production quality. It's really good. Yeah, is that something that you would hope to do for yourself? Is to really ramp up the production quality of one of your projects? Yeah, uh, if a studio can give me more money, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a shout out, but still. <laughs> if we're gonna make something like Pirate, it's gonna cost a lot of money. I think that. That film cost like a million. Oh yeah, it was ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, and there were special editions and yeah, the whole deal. So yeah, what is an average week for you when it comes to you know you you're getting ready to shoot a film? How does your yeah. day start, or how's your week start? Uh, it depends on where I am with the production process. So during the pre-production, what I do every day is basically booking the location, booking the talents, and writing the script. And then writing a script can take a lot of time. I usually will spend like two to three days just to think, mm -hmm. just to explore my inspiration. Mm -hmm. And then I took another day to write. And then after I write, I would spend another day to polish the script. So basically it takes me about a week to write nine page of script. And then after I finish my pre-production, I would you know, go into the production. And the production, we usually shoot one episode or two episodes in a day. And then the production day is usually 10 to 12 hours long. So it's it's pretty long if you think about it, if you are doing this a lot. And uh, 
after I film, I send the footage to editor, and then the editor will takes about like two weeks to add it.、Mm-hmm. So that pretty much my day. Like this is the cycle I go. Can we talk about、uh, your other side projects? You have、uh, we re- referenced it earlier,、uh, Sex and Boba with、uh, Teresa Low, yeah, and uh, another uh, podcast called Get Intimate Podcast. Yeah, so、uh, I think it's a misnomer. So Get Intimate Podcast is the umbrella、oh. podcast that I have, and、okay. then Sex and Boba is under it. Right, but you co-host that with. Uh, hustler journalist Teresa Low.、Yes. How did this come to be? So Teresa Low is my good friend. She also lives in Los Angeles, and she's also a stand-up comedian. And because she's a writer for Hustler magazine, so she also works in porn,、mm. basically. So、uh, we were like, oh, we are both Asians. We are both pornographers. I think we should have a podcast together. And and、uh, you've already like you you have about eight episodes up on your YouTube channel. What can、uh, someone expect when they go to see or listen to this podcast? Like, what do you get into? We talk about a、uh, we talk about a lot of things. Like, well, obviously we talk about sex, but in a really honest way.、Mm. So it's not like we are trying to hide anything. And then we also talk about、uh, just our dating life, and then、uh, being in our thirties and being、uh, Asian stuff like that. Anything. Yeah, I've I've actually got、uh, some questions lined up from some of my、uh, viewers and listeners、oh, really? for you. If that's all right, we can go through、yeah. a few of these. Hit me, please. <laughs> Hit me, please. Sure. Jesse off of Patreon asks, "I feel as though I have a lot of ideas, and I do want to get into the industry, but I don't want to be in front of the camera. What would you suggest for me to try to make my way?" Into the adult film industry, and he puts in brackets, "I'm an editor by trade." Oh, so basically, she wants to edit porn. Yes. Okay, got it. Uh, I guess it depends on where you live. But if you live in Los Angeles, there are a lot of events you can definitely go to and meet people who work in the industry, and you can also reach out to directors and um. Performers on Instagram and Twitter. I think some performers they are looking for editors to edit their OnlyFans content. Gotcha. Oh, interesting. So that is, yeah, so that is a way to get in contact with the industry. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Also on Patreon, Anna asks, "Do you have any sort of say as to the actors and actresses in your films?" Yes. So I get to. Have a lot of freedom to decide who I wanna cast, but obviously this is a business for a studio, so I cannot cast the same actress and actors all the time because I think the audience want to see a variety of faces on the porn side. Right. So sometimes I just have to, you know,、uh, be reasonable and、uh, cast different people. Gotcha. Interesting.、Yeah. Marcus off of Patreon again、uh, asks, "Do you try to incorporate inside jokes or running gag within your projects, like a few other directors or writers have in other projects?" Hmm, <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah, I don't think I do. Yeah,、hmm. I don't think I do any inside joke or any gag. But what I would say though, I don't know when this episode is gonna come out. I mean, this podcast episode is gonna come out. But I just shot a six episode porn feature,、hmm. and it's called Behind the Scenes, and it's like a mockumentary. So basically, it's like The Office. So it's a mockumentary, and then the story happens on a porn set, and everybody is playing a position. So it's basically a porno about a porn set, and then in that series, I cast myself as a director. So basically, I'm playing myself, and then the character is also called Oliver. So I'm playing myself. So I think that's probably what you would call an inside joke, because、mm-hmm. I think kind of if you watch that series, you would know what. And I'm like, well, I'm not gonna say, I guess. <laughs> That's that sounds incredibly fun. That's awesome. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, I have I have one more question, if you don't mind. This one is from Leanne, and she says, "I'm afraid who is also Leanne." <laughs> Is this? I, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Leanne asks. Oh, okay. So this is with you, you in front of the camera. Um, what role would you like to place yourself in in the future? Me in front yes. of the camera. Yes. Uh. Okay. I'm just gonna admit. I myself has an OnlyFans page, but right now I'm only doing solo content. I'm not collaborating with other people. Okay. So I guess I already show myself in front of the camera, and I thought about doing studio porn, but I don't know if I want to do that. So I feel like if I don't know if I want to do it, I probably won't do it. Gotcha. Fair enough. Yeah. Right on. With that being said, uh, first of all, I can tell you right now that this episode will actually be released before September. So with that being said, when will this um, uh, behind the scenes uh, incredible project of yours, when will it be released? Uh, next, next week. Okay, so <laughs> it'll already be out by the time this episode comes out. Okay, so the first episode of the behind the scenes series is going to release on August 24th. On August 24th. Oh, and, and they're going to, like, it's going to be yeah, scheduled so, out. Yeah, so it's a six-episode series, and then it's going to be released on every Thursday. And then the first episode is going to release on August 24th. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. And where can someone see this? Where, like, where can they watch this? Yeah, go to delphinefilms.com, D-E-L-P-H-I-N-E-F-I-L-M-S. Gotcha. And uh, if anyone wanted to check out your podcast or any of your work or your OnlyFans, uh, what's the best way to uh, go about checking out what you have to offer? My Instagram is Oliver Wong Comedy. My TikTok is also Oliver Wong Comedy. On my Instagram, you can find all my links and then you can find my OnlyFans as well on there. Perfect. Awesome. Did we leave anything out? Is that it? Do you want to add something else or... No, I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you so much. I had so much fun. Well, I appreciate it. And it was an absolute pleasure uh, speaking with you, Oliver. I, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for making it to the end of this episode. And if you don't mind, whatever it is that you are enjoying this episode on, be it on YouTube, the video form, or wherever you're listening to this, just please give me a follow. That way you can keep up to date with new episodes as well. It shows me that you are listening and you want more content and also it helps me out a lot so if you don't mind follow subscribe whatever it is that it is possible on this platform of your choosing and if you want to support me further the mediajack.ca there is patreon there is also other episodes and how to enjoy those and there is a merch store and of course if you join me on patreon you can actually get a shout out and be invited to ask questions to future guests or get a credit just like our executive producer yet again red wolf don again the mediajack.ca is where you can go for all of that and more thanks for joining me take care <laughs>